All right. So we've talked about ionic, covalent, uh, metallic, and finally secondary bonding. So now I want to kind of go over uh, a summary and a review uh, of bonding. And the first thing I want to mention is that when we talk about real materials and real solids, um, we're not often talking about just one type of bonding. We often have mixtures. And for the most part, we have mixtures. Um, so we could have metallic, or we could have uh, an element of metallic bonding, or we could have uh, mixtures of ionic and covalent. Uh, oh, sorry about that. Um, and so uh, I thought there was more to that slide. Um, so uh, let's talk specifically about this ionic covalent, right? When we talked about ionic, we talked about how these uh, electronegativities um, govern how ionic something is. And so that that's true, right? If, uh, if two electronegativities are really close, it's more covalent. If they're further apart, it's ionic. And so we can actually use that uh, for a compound to determine this kind of mixed bond state. We can figure out, in other words, the percent ionic character. And so this is the equation that kind of formulates that. So we have one minus an exponential, and inside the exponential it's minus, and then xA and xB, those are the two electronegativities uh, for the compound. So if we have sodium chloride, right, it's sodium, the electronegativity of soda, sodium and chloride. Uh, so that's what we're talking about. And then that's all divided by four, and this is its square root. And then to make it a percent, we multiply everything that we just saw here by 100%. All right? So this gives us a measure of this mixed bond character that we can have. All right, so let's get to one of the quiz questions then. Uh, so uh, just as a reminder, um, this is from our kind of in-class uh, sl lecture slides. So anything, anything you see where it says think, pair, share, uh, I'm going to put this in as a quiz question. So that will be uh, located on Canvas uh, under quizzes for the week. So, um, so to calculate, what I want us to do is look at two uh, compounds, MgO, magnesium oxide, or sometimes called magnesia, and silicon carbide, SiC. So I want you to take those two materials um, and calculate the ionic character using the equation from the previous slide, or if you want to uh, go to the book it's going to be the same equation and I want you to um, and I want you to calculate the ionic character um, for those two materials uh, and so you're going to need the electronegativities uh, those you can find in our textbook so uh, feel free to look there uh, but see if you can calculate these two real quick um, and uh, pause the video come back and we will discuss but um, use those and if you want to take a look real quick um, compare the two values that you have. So pause the video, come back, and we will discuss. OK, so let's go ahead and look at the, the answers for this. So I won't go through and, and uh, you know, I, I've got the equations here so you can kind of check your work. Um, I believe these are the values uh, from the electronegativity values from uh, the, uh, the book. Um, if you use a different resource, you might get slightly different values, but you should get something in the general uh, region. Um, so this is, let's, uh, let's go through the, the math here real quick. Uh, magnesium oxide, um, I've got the two electronegativity values. Again, I believe these are the ones from the, uh, the book. And then if you basically just plug and chug, right? Plug those two values into the expression. And uh, in doing so, we find that magnesium oxide is 73.4% ionic. So this, like we saw with uh, sodium chloride, is very ionic. And, and just in general, you can see that because these numbers are quite different when you look in the grand scheme of the electronegativities. And then if you compare it to silicon carbide, um, you have 1.8 and 2.5. Those are much closer than you had with MgO. So you'd expect the character to be much lower. Um, and so when we plug that in, we get 11.5% ionic. So it's much less. So in general, we consider this a more covalent material. Um, and then this is a ionic material. But again, look at the numbers and you'll see that there are still some uh, percent that is covalent in this case, and then a, uh, some percent here that's still ionic. And so that's important to, uh, to keep in mind. All right, 
So now let's kind of summarize all these different bond types. And so I'm going to start and I'm going to look at ionic, covalent, metallic, and secondary. So if we're looking at bond energy, we see that ionic has very high bond energy. Uh, covalent can actually vary quite a bit. It can be very high like diamond, but we can also have very low values. And same thing with metallic. We can have a varying degree of bond energies. And as a rule of thumb, you know, you can always look at the melting temperatures as a measure of that. And then secondary, again, we talked about like orders of magnitude, secondary was lower. And so this has the lowest bond energy. And those materials tend to be very low melting points uh, materials. Um, so other um, ideas here, just to kind of uh, talk about directionality to sum that up, um, we talked in ionic that it was non-directional. These are ceramics. Covalent, they are directional. Uh, they tend to be things like semiconductors, some ceramics as well. And then again, the uh, in polymers, we have uh, within the chain, we have covalent bonds. And when we get to polymers, I'll emphasize some of these differences. Metallic, uh, again, these were non-directional like ionic. Um, these are metals from the metallic. And then secondary, um, that's again directional bond like we saw with dipoles. Um, and this also is uh, important for polymers, but uh, between the chains in a polymer or what we call uh, interchain. All right, so we can also look at the classes of materials. So oops, let me go back. Uh, so ceramics. So ceramics tend to be either metallic, uh, sorry, ionic uh, or covalent or a mixture of the two. So they have the largest bonding energy that results in large melting temperatures, large modulus, elastic modulus, what we talked about very briefly, basically the force it takes to uh, separate or uh, compress a material. Uh, and then have small uh, coefficients of thermal expansion. So they don't expand or contract that much with changes in temperature. Metals, um, again, have that moderate bonding energy, and therefore they have moderate melting, moderate elastic moduli, and moderate um, coefficients of thermal expansion. And then polymers, again, um, they have covalent in this chain, and then secondary holding the chains together. Um, those tend to have um, very low uh, bonding energies. They have very directional properties and they have, because of uh, the secondary bonds holding things together, the secondary bonds dominate. And so we get low, in general, we get low melting temperatures, low elastic modulus, and then they tend to change a lot with temperature.